So I have here the formula we talked about in the last lecture. The, the idea here is that if we have an underlying uh, continuous function f on a closed interval, uh, and we, we sample a certain number of points, n points, uh, uh, from that interval, and we use those points to calculate the Lagrange interpolating polynomial p of x, we have uh, this remainder or this error term. Remember, when, when we kind of talked about this at the end, I said, well, like in general, having more points is better because that increase of the value of n, we have that n factorial in the denominator. Of course, factorials grow really, really fast. Uh, so in general, having more points is going to make this smaller. And, and I kind of politely ignored that whole x minus x1, x minus x2 part, thinking, well, in general, it's, it's going to be dwarfed by that factorial term. And a lot of the time that is the case, but not all the time. And that's the situation I want to look at here in this lecture. So say we have this function here, f of x equals 1 over 1 plus 25x squared. And the graph that I have here is, is the actual graph. It's the graph based on, on the original function. I said, so, okay, well, let's say uh, I take this interval from negative 1 to 1, and I want to do the Lagrange polynomial with six points. So I, I did just kind of the obvious thing, and I divided that interval uh, into five even pieces. Six points will give me five intervals. Uh, I came up with a Lagrange polynomial, and I graphed it. And when I did, I got this. This is not bad. I mean, it did kind of miss that big peak in the middle, uh, but out at the edges, yeah, okay, it, it did a pretty good job of approximating the original curve. So then for my next step, I said, okay, well, let, let's see if we can improve this. Let's say I go up to n equals 10. Right, 10 points and 9 intervals. We're kind of expecting that we're going to get a better result, that the approximation is going to be even better. Well, here's what happened. So, yeah, it, it did do a better job of approximating that big peak in the middle, but look at what happened out at the edges. It got quite a bit worse. It's, it's got this weird oscillating... Uh, up and down kind of thing that really carried it quite a ways away from the original, significantly further away uh, than the n equals 6 case did. So what we're seeing here is an example of what's called Runge's phenomenon. It was, it was first investigated by a mathematician named Carl David Runge, uh, whose name is going to come up again later on. He also did a lot of work in uh, approximating definite integrals. So we're, we are going to see him again. Uh, and, and he found that under certain circumstances, Increasing the number of points actually makes the approximation worse, specifically out at the edges. Okay, so here, here's what's going on. What I did here uh, is I, I took the p of x, I moved it over uh, to the right, uh, to the left hand side. So f of x minus p of x equals that error term. And then I took the maximum of both sides, because I, I, the maximum of the absolute value because I, I want to get uh, some idea of an upper bound on this error. And this is where it kind of gets interesting. Both of these pieces over here on the right-hand side are unbounded. And the, the reason that uh, right-hand piece is unbounded is because the lengths of my intervals are all the same. And that, that's what is ultimately creating this problem here. So there is a solution to this. There are these things called Chebyshev nodes. Chebyshev, if you're taking a statistics class, yes, it's that Chebyshev. Um, what he did is he, he came up with this formula for, for coming up with these nodes uh, this, based on this cosine function. So if you kind of look at the distribution here, you'll see that the points around the edges are clustered. Right? Those are all kind of within point three of each other. Then things get much more spread out in the middle. So by, by concentrating our points in those outer areas where we know that there's the potential for there to be a problem, uh, this resolves the problem. Right? If you look at the graphs, right, I've got the original graph and I've got the n equals six graph here again. And I've replaced the n equals 10 evenly distributed points graph 
uh, with the graph that I get from using these points, and you see that this does clearly fix the problem. Uh, that blue graph, the one that has the peak that comes close to the uh, original functions, does a much better job uh, around those endpoints than both the n equals 6 and the n equals 10 that we came up with on the previous slide. So this is a, a, ultimately a, a way to resolve this, right? You, you just kind of have to be uh, kind of smart about the way you, you pick your points and how you distribute them within the interval. All right, so this is going to be the end of our, our discussion of Legendre polynomials. I've got a link here uh, back to the original lecture where we developed the formula. Uh, if, if you'd like to go back and see that, if you didn't watch it originally. Uh, and of course, if you like this presentation, please don't forget to click on the like button down below as well.